your name? Um, I'm Tamara Konetska. Great. And in which city and country are you based? I'm at the University of Chicago. I'm in Chicago, Illinois, in the USA. Great. And what organization do you work for? University of Chicago. Yeah. Okay. It's a small department called the Department of Health Studies. It's sort of the equivalent of what you might think of as a, a Department of Public Health. Okay, great. And how would you explain what you do to a layperson? So um, I'm on the faculty as an associate professor, and my job involves both teaching and research, but probably 90% research um, and a little bit of teaching here and there. Um, my research focus is on the health economics of long-term care. Um, I'm an economist, health economist by training, and uh, I tend to focus on how healthcare providers behave in the face of incentives that we give them through policy. So, you know, if we put quality information in the public domain um, through healthcare report cards, how do providers react? Do consumers use this information? How do providers react? Do they improve the quality of care they deliver, et cetera? And I do most of that in nursing home data, but I also do hospitals and some other things. Interesting. Very. Um, what do you think is commonly understood as long-term care in the U.S.? <sighs> There's always uh, debates about the exact terminology. Um, but generally, we define it as, you know, we sort of people who actually know something about long-term care uh, define it as um, care or support given to people with functional and cognitive impairments. So, for example, assistance with activities of daily living that people need um, on a longer-term basis, like you know, more than three months or so at a time. Okay. And there's there's a big debate over you know long-term care versus long-term services and supports. Um, people sort of attach different meanings to the different terminology. Okay. But generally, it's, you know, assistance with long-term functional impairment. Great. Okay. And what would you say are the main three policy priorities for long-term care in the U.S.? Um, so, policy priorities from my perspective, or...? Yeah. 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 Okay. <laughs> like, <laughs> what? what I think should be priorities? Because <laughs> um, I, I may not necessarily agree with people who actually make the policies. Okay. <laughs> um, so... I would say the first one is probably the challenge of how we're going to finance long-term care, which I imagine is pretty much one of the policy priorities anywhere right now with aging of the population. So in the U.S., we don't have any sort of coherent financing system for long-term care. Mm -hmm. um, it's very fragmented, um, and most people really have you know, not enough savings and no sort of insurance system they can rely on for that. So just the idea that as the public, as the population ages, we don't really have a good way of financing people's long-term care needs. So that's, that's one policy priority, figuring out the financing dilemma. Um, a related one is probably um, one that's near and dear to my heart is fragmentation of the system, um, or the priority would be reducing fragmentation of the system, because there are you know, various payers involved and um, it's very hard for individuals to navigate the system, and it creates a lot of distortions in the system. Um, you know, the healthcare providers, long-term care providers, don't really have a good incentive to look at, you know, what's best for this individual as a whole, looking across acute care and post-acute care and all of their needs. Mm -hmm. um, and so sort of reducing the fragmentation in the payment and the delivery system such that people could actually look at the person more holistically, I think, is a, is a priority. Okay. And, uh, and you wanted three. Um, you know, I think generally people are still concerned about the quality of care and long-term care in the U.S., and so another policy priority would be how best to increase quality of care. Great. What do you, um, do you think these po policy priorities have changed over the last five to ten years? Um, I think that there is definitely increased emphasis on reducing fragmentation in the system because policymakers believe that that is one way we could save a lot of money. And so I think, you know, experimenting with models of capitation and integration that might be better for individuals and could save money have gained popularity. Okay. That's interesting. So how do you see the system in the U.S. changing over the next five to ten years? Um, I don't know 
know that it'll change dramatically, unfortunately, <laughs> but I do think some of those models that some of them were proposed as part of the Healthcare Reform Act um, that was passed a few years ago in the U.S. Um, I think the system will change and that we'll see more and more of these integrated and capitated models. For example, states combining their Medicare and Medicaid programs um, to, you know, to get rid of some of that fragmentation and to try to avoid the distortions that make us sort of unnecessarily hospitalize people and all of those things that cost money. Okay, great. And is the current financial crisis having impact on long-term care in the U.S.? Yes. Um, I can't imagine anybody would say no <laughs> to that question <laughs> anywhere. Um, but certainly in that in the U.S., Medicaid, which is the public payer that was designed for low-income individuals as a safety net, um, Medicaid is now kind of the long-term care payer of default. Um, and pays for more long-term care than any other source in the U.S. And state uh, budgets, as they face more and more pressure from this financial crisis, um, are are cutting their Medicaid budgets. And you know, you can't. It's it's hard to imagine cutting Medicaid without cutting funding to long-term care. So just when we're sort of facing this need for greater financing and an aging population, the main payer of long-term care is you know, facing um, huge fiscal challenges. Okay. Um, in your view, if you had one opportunity to introduce a new policy reform, what would that be and why? Um, yeah, I mean, that's sort of a... <laughs> My answer to that depends on whether it has to be a realistic policy reform <laughs> or just one that I <laughs> would like to see implemented, um, which may never be politically feasible. I'll give you and two. The, the sort of more realistic policy proposal would be to um, provide more integration of the payment system. So, for example, for long-term care recipients, really for everyone, to combine Medicare, Medicaid payment and eliminate the separate incentives associated with those programs so that we can provide a level of quality of care and coordination of care for people um, in an efficient way. So I think sort of more integration um, of Medicare and Medicaid is what I would implement. I think, you know, the less politically feasible option that I would like to see is sort of moving more toward a single payer system, eliminating those distortions for, for everyone. I mean, it's not just long-term care recipients that face a fragmented system. It's just particularly bad for them. Okay. And um, what is the most important piece of research evidence that we have yet to address and that could inform policy changes in the U.S.? US. Um, yeah, I'm sure you're getting a lot of different answers to, <laughs> to this question. I really think that what could make the most difference is very good cost-effectiveness evidence. Um, we just don't have a lot of it. There's a lot more in the UK. We don't have a lot of it in the US because, you know, people are somehow fundamentally opposed to considering costs and considering cost effectiveness. Um, but there are a lot of ways in which that kind of evidence could really solve some policy dilemmas. For example, how much better off, how much should we invest in home and community-based care versus institutional care in the U.S.? Um, you know, there's, this is a debate that goes on between advocates and policymakers with really almost no good cost-effectiveness evidence um, about what might be best for people with certain health statuses, you know, considering all the costs and benefits and their preferences. Um, so even though we've sort of shied away from that in the U.S., I think good cost-effectiveness evidence um, would really improve things. Great. Okay. Um, I'm going to ask you a few quick-fire questions. Okay. I just need you to give me a rating between 1 and 10, 1 being low, 10 being high. What policy priority is allocated to long-term care in the U.S.? Two. How aware is the general public about what the long-term care system offers them? Two. <laughs> and how well does the system support people with long-term care needs? Three. 
How well does it look after their carers? Uh, two. Good. Thanks very much, Tora. <laughs> Sorry for the pessimistic outlook there. No, no, thanks very much.